Esperanza Unida means United Hope. And by donating your used vehicle, you can provide hope to someone in need. Esperanza utilizes your used vehicle in the effort of teaching auto repair. It then sells these used vehicles at affordable prices to low-income individuals from the community, providing access to reliable, affordable transportation. The revenue from these sales also helps to pay for job skills training and job placement services. So donate your used vehicle and give hope to someone in need. And now back to Focus on Diversity with Troy Shaw. And welcome back to the program. Let's continue on with our diversity discussion. Illegal officer. Community members are reaching out to help Oscar Ayala Canejo, the man federal authorities say is an illegal immigrant who assumed the identity of a deceased relative and became a Milwaukee police officer. Ayala Canejo is being held by federal authorities on a charge of falsely claiming to be a U.S. citizen. If convicted, he faces a maximum of three years in prison and a $250,000 fine, and he will be what? Deported. He deported. Now, of course, Robert, you know I'm not starting with you just because I'm just starting with you. I'm going to start with you. Why are you starting with me? Well, I mean, I, 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 is this a reason why we should have more stringent laws in regards to immigration? You know, I mean, this flies in the face of what Lou Dobbs is trying to portray undocumented people as. Uh, being out there spreading leprosy and and uh, being drug dealers and a scourge and a threat to America. True. Society. This, he, this man this guy, to be This up. guy just so happened to join our society, to uphold the law and to be a part of our community and contribute in a way that promotes the ideals of our freedom, that promotes the ideals of American way of life, that promotes to the immigrant community what a real American is supposed to be about. And right? promote that, and, free, and, that and, and, But then on check, the though. flip side, the flip side was, hey, this guy was living a lie. This guy was out there telling people that he was someone that he wasn't, supposedly upholding the law and may have, comp well, I don't think he compromised anything in regards to any uh, uh, police reports he may have prepared because he was a booking officer. Mm -hmm. uh, but the bottom line is this individual went out and did what most undocumented people in this country do, and that is come to this country to contribute to this country and become a part of the American way of life. And he did it in order to provide for his family, and he did it in order to become a, a, a true American, that, uh, uh, probably a dream that this guy has had mm -hmm. since he came to this country. And here it comes down to, Chris, I mean, it comes down to whether or not we should allow anyone to break the law to enforce the law. Think about that. I'm going to allow you to break the law because you are forced. What, what is your thoughts? Well, that's kind of what we made a comment in regards to the IRS several weeks ago. <laughs> I, I was... You know, I'm at a loss for this. He, he is there as a police officer, a man of the community, and he took this identity at the age of like 14, something like that. So he knew what he was doing. Um, but he, is, he has become a part of normal America. He is an American citizen in my eyes. He is an American peace officer. Um, yes, he's a booking agent, but he is a peace officer, and he has done everything that any righteous American would do. He took over somebody else's identity, though. That part is illegal. Um, well, that part, of course, he's I, a little immigrant as well. I would like to. I mean, I'm not. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just yeah, but he came facts. over when he was very, very young, very young. I believe it was he was a toddler when he came over. If I read correctly, I'm not positive. Um, I, I would like to see the federal government come in, step in, and say, you know what? You have upheld the laws. You have been. You are a peace officer. We, not because it's a special circumstance, but because it is a special circumstance. We are going to give you your immigration, your green card, we're going to make you, allow you to be, still maintain it as a peace officer here in Milwaukee and deal with allow some type of to stay, Sandy, would that have been amnesty? Well, sure, since he's giving him some sort of a free pass for what he did. And the scary part to me about this is that Nan Haggerty has said that there's no way the Milwaukee Police Department could have found out with a background check. Now, take, it, take, take him and make him a sleeper cell terrorist who wants to be a peace officer, and that's very, very scary. Oh, that is. So I think that the, the issue here, we got two issues here. One is that somehow we've got to be able to do better background checks. I don't, I don't accept that we can't do better. And second, we have an issue here of that we have communities here where we have people who have been here a while that can't get to be part of the mainstream. Here's this guy that figured out how to be part of the mainstream. So how do we translate his success to the people that are already here and help them become part of the the mainstream of America. How do we do this? And I admit that this guy is a challenge because he became a straight arrow, did all these great things, but he's here on some sort of illegal 
premises. And so the question is, if you reward him for it, have you said if you get away with it long enough, is that and, the solution? And, and, and what I find, that, that's no, no, but what I find interesting is where you have a lot of these media, mainstream news sources out there around the country where if he was an illegal alien who had engaged in some law-breaking activity, robbed somebody, possibly raped a, a young girl, or murdered someone, this would have been all across the nation as an example of why we got to go after these undocumented people. Mm -hmm. But you notice that this hasn't broke uh, across the nation yet. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the right, or the conservatives, or the people who are anti-undocumented people know they can't use this because it's a catch-22 situation here. Yeah, now here, but here's the thing, though, Robert. I mean, we've been talking about illegal immigration for quite some time on this television program. What we haven't talked about is though, how legal Hispanics, or anyone legal from that matter, how this actually hurts them in the process of, of, of perhaps maybe their relatives coming over in a legal sense. I mean, this illegal immigration doesn't just hurt hurt the illegal quote unquote immigrant, it hurts the legal immigrant from furthering their uh, their process of bringing their family I, I don't know if I buy into that because the people who are applying for legal status are in the system. They're already uh, being processed. They're already in the stream. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to me, an undocumented person is not going to get over on anything that a person already in the system is already able to do in this country. Mm -hmm. You know, and when but, we, they, 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 but they can depress wages for jobs so that they make it difficult. But, that, but that's where we got to uphold the companies who are hiring these folks. And that's where we got to go ahead and pull and, and make these people follow the law. And gentlemen, and when we come back, we're going to have our closing comments. Stay with Focus on Diversity. We will, right? We'll be right back.